Hey guys, my name is Nick and welcome back to the channel and in this video we are doing a painting guide and that is of the stone statues that you see in the Games Workshop Scepter Imperialis Basilicanum kit. Now the same techniques for this can be applied to pretty much any uh, any Games Workshop uh, statue or, or stone masonry kind of work. So if you're looking for that stone statue effect then this is the video for you. But before we jump into the video guide, if you're enjoying the content on this channel and you want to see more and keep up to date, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and press the bell button for notifications of all the future content coming to this channel. Uh, we've just gone past uh, 900 subscribers on the way to 1,000. At that point, there will be a giveaway. So uh, the sooner we get there, the sooner you've got a chance of winning some goodies from the channel. But until then, let's get straight into the video. This is a uh, full set of all the paints and glosses and varnishes and glaze mediums used throughout this video and I'll leave a full list of those below. So we're going to start the paint job from a black prime and then using Vallejo's blue grey which is like a heavy dark blue grey colour to go entirely over the, uh, the black prime. And I'll be putting a couple of coats of this through the airbrush to start with. A lot of this is actually hand finished so as we get through the, uh, the video we'll be showing all the different colours that are used and how I've applied them. But the first part is to get a nice smooth coat of dark grey um, or whichever marbly stony kind of colour you're going for. I want a stone effect because I think it contrasts with the, the final terrain piece. So as you can see I'm just making sure I get a nice even thin coat uh, and it would take about two or three coats uh, going over this black prime with this colour. Now as usual I'll leave a full list of colours that I use and the Games Workshop equivalents where I'm not using GW paints in the uh, description below this video. If you don't have an airbrush uh, you can do it by hand, it is a bit more painful. Uh, you just got to make sure that you do about 5 or 6 thin coats and allow them to thoroughly dry in between each coat. Otherwise you'll end up with brush marks showing through and you certainly don't want that effect on your stone statue effect. It's a bit of a weird kit this one, I mean you can't see all that all that detail in the back, all that mechanical detail once it's attached to the actual kit itself which seems to be a bit of a, a lot of effort for not a lot of reward but I'll be painting the full thing anyway. I guess you could use it as a standalone if you don't use the the wall attachment pieces that I've already got attached. So I guess there's a, there's a reason for it, I mean you could use it as a standalone statue but it's it's a lot of mechanical sort of life preserving instruments and so on that's going on so is there someone still inside this terrain piece um, that's that's for you to work out yourself it's a bit weird I mean look at all those dials and instruments and mechanicum symbols and so on pipes and things is that is that a, a life preserving thing is this is this Rebute Gilliman's previous state? I don't know. It's, it's, it's a bit weird, but there we go. Anyway, back to the painting. So as you can see, uh, atomized paint through an airbrush does dry pretty quick. So you can easily go through uh, and redo all the patchy pits and just keep going really and keep turning it. And as you keep turning it, you're picking up more and more of the black original parts and just making sure you get that nice coverage. As I said, as, because it dries so quick, you can just keep rotating it and the previous bit you've already gone has already dried, providing your paint is thinned correctly. And just sort of readjusting the grip, uh, just to make sure that I've got uh, firm control over the uh, terrain piece and just making sure that my paint is continually flowing uh, I'm using quite a low PSI setting so it does tend to um, gunge up the needle at the end a little bit so I do have to keep cleaning it off camera. But as you can see, you know, it's this is all in one take really so you can see how quickly it does dry and I'm just keep going over and over and over making sure that uh, everywhere is covered in this base coat. Now I'm going to switch up the paint to uh, a Games Workshop Orthuan Grey coming up now. You can see it on screen right now. Uh, this is a fairly natural highlight colour to this blue grey that I've already applied. And I'm going to be mixing that and thinning that suitably in the airbrush. I do mix directly in the cup um, when I'm doing my airbrushing. So what I do is I actually put, the, uh, put an airbrush thinner into the cup first, then put in some uh, 
dollops of the uh, the paint color that I want to use, give it a little stir, give it a test spray, and then we should be good to go. Depending how long your paint's dried in the cup will depend how good that, that method works. If not, you do need to clean it out. So uh, again, low pressure setting and just airbrushing gently over pretty much everywhere that I've already been. You can see it's a bit sticky already because I did leave a gap between the blue grey and the Orthuran grey coats. So the, uh, the fluid head nozzle did block a little bit, but we're, we're good to go again. Now the way to really apply this, I mean I've applied over the large areas quite uniformly. Um, but when you get to those bottom bits where all sort of the clothing and the boots and stuff are, you can use what's called a, a zenith highlighting technique. Basically you're angling the airbrush down at about 45 degrees. So you can see it quite clearly here as I go towards the bottom of the model. About 45 degrees pointing downwards, that means that where the cloak is kind of hidden from the airbrush spray, that leaves the original colour behind. And that acts as a natural shade to the, uh, the airbrush layer that we're putting on now. But it's entirely up to you whether you want to do that and then you want to manually shade that afterwards or not. But uh, a lot of good airbrushers will do this zenith or zenithal highlighting technique. Where all you're doing, as I said, is just angling down at 45 degrees and just spraying down so that those bits that are hidden uh, beneath some of the uh, the cloaks and folds just don't get, don't get caught by the atomized spray pattern. It's a handy little uh, piece on the back of this model here for me able to uh, grip hold of this and not spray myself entirely in paint. But as we get up to these shoulder pauldrons, I'm trying to be a bit more careful with the application here. I, I don't want it to push into the corners of the, uh, of the earlier colour that I've already applied. So I'm just trying to spray it more centrally and then trying to catch those, uh, those rim pieces. Now on a normal uh, 40k model, if you're um, you know, used to spraying uh, regular Space Marines, they're going to be a different different colour, right? So your shoulder pauldrons will be gold or red or black or whatever. So this, this stage isn't important, but the whole model of this, I want the stone effect. So everything needs to be covered in this particular way. And that includes all those little uh, shoulder greaves and, and so on. But I want to make sure that I do leave a little bit of natural shade as I'm going around this. So I'm trying to be really careful the way that I apply it so that some of that earlier blue-grey, as you can see there, it's in the corners and at the bottom there, is still left on there and I'm not just blasting the entire model with this author and grey colour. We just go around picking up more bits of the model here, just uh, going for the, this main spray coverage here and just making sure I've got a nice thin coat. Although uh, you could go with a slightly uneven coat if you really wanted. I mean stone isn't traditionally uh, uniform in colour so leaving some variance in there could be, uh, could be the thing for you but I'm trying to go fairly uniform here. And once that all through and grey is dry, this is the uh, the net result. So I'll just spin the model around in my hands and you can see there some of that the result of that zenith highlighting, especially under the large shoulder pauldrons and around the feet. And you can see that I've managed to leave some of that dark grey in those corners on those uh, shoulder pads as well. But that's all the airbrush done. The rest of it is now going to be with the traditional hairy stick. And the first thing we're going to use is Agrax Earthshade. Uh, which is a, a great colour for sort of weathering this stone. I'm also going to be using this glaze medium from Vallejo. Now the equivalent is going to be Lamium medium. And this is going to adjust the properties of the paint a little bit so that it thins it but doesn't detract, it doesn't water down the colour too much. It's, it's weird to explain really. But first off we're going to go with Neat Agrax Earthshade. Now I'm going to apply this into all of the, uh, the line joins where I'm pointing out here all of the greaves, all of the little bits of uh, chipped battle damage that's on the statue. And as we do this, I'm going to run it in two times speed, so it's a little bit uh, shorter of a video, so it's not going to bore you to tears, line shading this model. So these models are, are pretty detailed, right? So there's quite obvious where I'm going to be applying this. So you can see all this little sort of chipped stone battle damage revealing some kind of metal cabling underneath. I'm not overly fussed about that. But the, uh, the lines on the cloak here, you can see there's a nice little join on this cloak here. I'm just going to sort of fill that in with, with neat Agrax Earthshade. And while it's still wet, anything that is uh, applied in the wrong place, I can soon wipe away the, with a finger or thumb uh, and it doesn't detract from the model's effect. There's lots of tiny little chip marks all over this thing. Uh, just trying to dab a little bit of that Agrax in. You can see me there constantly flicking with uh, thumb or finger over the top just in case it's uh, gone onto the stone where I don't want it to be. Some nice easy bits on the toes there, lots of little greave lines on the toes. And this is really going to, the, the whole idea of this Agrax Earthshade is to make the stone look a little bit worn, a little bit uh, weathered really. Uh, the impact of 
rain and just general seasoning of the of the stonework. And this is a really handy camera angle. <laughs> um, but all I'm going to do is just go around the entire model and end up with this. So uh, yeah, all I've done is just apply that Agrax Earthshade, allow it to dry and just run it into all the greaves, all the creases and it's as near and neat as possible to the corners that I could make it. But that's not 100% important because we're now going to blur those lines out a little bit. This is where we're going to go 50-50 with the Agrax Earthshade and this glaze medium or uh, Lamia medium, whichever you want. And all we're going to do is go into all these little corner pieces and then just draw out this, this far thinner paint. And this will blur and blend uh, your weathered effect into the stone a little bit. And it's a little bit thinner, it flows a little bit, it takes a little bit longer to dry as well. So you want to be careful of any smudges and smears. And all you can see is me feathering out that brown uh, mix, the Agrax Earthshade mix now, towards the stone from all of the darker recesses. So I'm just going to go around the entire model and do that. Uh, there's quite a bit of it to do to be honest. And then also the bottom of the cloak and some of his sword as well. But you can generally see the idea here as I sort of feather that uh, that brown. I'm a bit close to the camera and I've set it to not autofocus. So apologies for that. There are some in focus pieces, I promise. But as we go around, all we're going to do is just pick out those bits and just sort of feather that, that colour out. So it just blends a little bit and uh, looks a little bit more natural. Just skip it up onto the shoulder pauldrons here, just doing exactly the same thing again, just pulling this colour from the, uh, the the stronger, neat Agrax Earthshade in towards the middle where the stone is, and just drawing that colour out and just feathering it in. Pretty simple, uh, I'm using a, I think I'm using a size 1 brush for this, um, but any you know any sensible brush would do. Uh, I think it's a 1 or a 0, I can't, can't quite remember. Um, but yeah, just go around the model and uh, and copy that effect really. And then once we're done, we end up with this, and you can see that I've applied it to some of the centre of the uh, of the sword, and also the bottom of the of the uh, the robes and cloak. Even though there's not a natural grieve in there, you can see that I've just sort of feathered from the bottom of those bits where where rain would rain or grime would sort of naturally congeal at the bottom of any any surface after it's run uh, vertically down it, and would just more naturally gather at the bottom of those robes. And you can see that effect that I've applied there. So it's beginning to look um, a very sort of naturally weathered uh, stone, really. That's the uh, the effect I was going for. Next up, we're going to highlight the stone with white. Now you can use Games Workshop. I've got, a, I think it's called Paraxy White. Is their is their dry paint, but any any non super runny white paint would do. And all you're going to do is dry brush it anyway. So you want to make sure that you uh, wipe off as much as possible on this uh, onto your uh, kitchen roll. And I'm testing it around the back first, just to make sure that I didn't have uh, too much paint on there, and then I can start working towards where the more visible details are going to be on the on the scenery piece when it's complete. And you can see there, I'm just trying to pick out some of the folds that are in that um, cloak and cloth work, so that it does stand out a little bit from the uh, or through and grey that we've already done. Just rubbing it across those uh, those el those sharp elbow joints there. I'm just going to run around the entire model and just try and dry brush and pick out all of those. Uh, really sharpest details. The dry brushing, super common technique. There's lots of videos on it. Uh, Warhammer TV have got loads of stuff on it. Uh, everyone dry brushes at some point in their uh, painting career, and it's really applicable, certainly when you're doing uh, terrain pieces. It's, there's lots of detail on them, and a lot of people don't want to spend too much time on their terrain. I love spending time on terrain. If you spend all that time on your models, you want them to fight on a really cool looking scenery piece. So I do tend to go a little bit heavier on my detail on my terrain pieces. So just going around the rest of the model then with that dry brush of white and we end up with this effect. It looks a bit more ghostly now. Uh, being very careful around that skull face to make sure that you're not turning it completely white. But you can really see the effect as I just sort of move that model in and out of the camera angle. You can see the white pick up in the light as I rotate it round. Certainly that angle there. Uh, you can see that on all the, uh, on the, all the uh, cloak folds and crevices. So that's pretty much all the stonework, and the rest of it is going to be personal detail now. Um, I want this to match the rest of my uh, model, but what I want to do is try and match this to the Games Workshop box art. I've not found any guides on how they've done it at all. Um, so I'm just kind of making this up to make it look a bit like the Games Workshop Basilicanum box art. And what they've got is a very heavily weathered gold plinth. 
So I'm going here with Retributor Armor straight out of the packet. Now, I didn't own this Retributor Armor color until Warhammer Conquest came out. And I couldn't get hold of a copy of Warhammer Conquest for love nor money because everyone bought 300 copies each. So a very kind man, a big mech Dan Skull, uh, secured me a copy from his local area and sent it to me free of charge. So a big shout out to a YouTuber called Big Mac Dan Skull. I'll leave a link to his channel below. Uh, go and hit him up uh, for a sub and I'm sure he'll appreciate it. Tell him I sent you and said hello. So once we've done a, uh, a couple of coats of that gold, it really does, it's a little bit thin. Um, I certainly thin it a lot. So a couple of good coats of that gold. And then we just get his personal detail again. I'm painting his shield red. Uh, no other reason other than it's, it's on the box art. It looks good and looks... Uh, a bit more um, standout-ish. Now again, this is entirely personal preference on the mounting pieces to go onto the actual Basilicanum itself. Now I've painted mine in the Ushabti Bone kind of scheme and you start off with this particular colour which is Zandri Dust. Now my main piece of terrain that this is going to attach to is painted entirely in Zandri Dust then dry brushed with the Ushabti and then uh, glazed and uh, shaded with Agrax Earthshade and so these pieces are going to match that terrain piece so that it looks a bit more seamless. If your terrain is a different colour then you paint it in the colour that matches your terrain. Now all the detail around the back um, as I said earlier in the video if you're going to use this as a standalone guy and you don't want those attachment pieces you're going to paint all of this detail on the back because you're going to have a 360 degree view of your entire statue. Now I still don't know the point of all these all these bits of gubbins that are on the back of the statue, but it adds a bit of uh, variance and detail, I guess. I'm going to paint the whole lot in a gunmetal or lead belcher, depending on your uh, paint manufacturer preference. So anything that looks like it's a pipe or looks a bit artificial, doesn't look like it's a natural part of the stonework, I've painted in that lead belcher or gunmetal colour. I'm going to go and paint the edge trim of the shield in a brass colour. So uh, I'm using a Vallejo's brass colour. Uh, I can't remember the, uh, the GW equivalent, but as I said, I'll leave a list of all the paints that I've used and the Games Workshop equivalent where I've not used their paints in the description below for you. So there's a nice little bit of trim around this red shield. And I'm just going to paint that in this brass and then we can get on to the next section. Very simple, uh, if, you, if you don't want a red shield and a brass shield, you know, whatever colour works for you. But this is the colour that matches the other statue that I have already prepared earlier. So the rest of this video is just going to be me finishing up my personal details on this model then. So I'm going to go straight to your Shabti bone so I can start highlighting up these little adjoining pieces that fit onto the rest of the terrain section. You know, you don't have to watch this bit if you don't want to. If you're painting it to a completely different scheme, then feel free to drop out now and uh, I won't hold it a grudge against you. But for those of you that stick around, yeah, this is exactly how I'm painting uh, most of my other terrain. I've got a whole bunch of stuff on uh, terrain that I've been doing, uh, Sector Mechanicus terrain. I'm going to be following very similar steps to that, so I want my terrain to all look uh, as if it's come from the same manufactorium, really. So it all looks vaguely similar and all blends in nice and seamlessly on my tabletop. Now I'm going to go back to some Agrax Earthshade now. This is going to be used uh, in uh, several spots here. First, I'm going to fill in the, I'm going to line a shade, which is difficult from this camera angle. I'm um, apologies again. Uh, my camera angles do suck. That's a little bit better. Uh, line shade between the red and the brass on the shield. But I'm also going to go all over that brass as well. So everywhere that is that brass colour, I'm just going to shade it in just like that, uh, just with neat Agrax Earthshade. You can see there as the camera focuses a little bit better, that's uh, exactly what I'm going to do. I'm just going to go around there. Now all this metal section, I'm going to liberally apply uh, Agrax Earthshade. Also those little bolts that sort of look um, part of the statue. And all of that gold base and all of that uh, uh, Zandri dust section is all going to get a generous coat. And this is still wet as, uh, as we do. You can see it dripping off the bottom of the model there. All of those sections... A nice generous coat, uh, coat of Agrax Earthshade in that. That gives a more worn metal look than uh, using Nuln Oil. Now the whole model has been given about 40-45 minutes to dry. So it's all touch dry now. Uh, which is a lot better to work with. And what we're going to do now is just touch in all of the, uh, the shield detailing here. So this is exactly the same as the way that I've done all of the, uh, the cloak work and the stone work. 
but I'm just doing it by brush. So we're going to go first over with that blue grey from Vallejo, then with the uh, Orthuan grey, which is the stage we've got to here, and then we'll go over that with the uh, Agrax Earthshade, and then the white as well to highlight the edges. There's lots of uh, bits of detail, and the uh, the Games Workshop uh, base plinth is quite a heavy weathered gold, so I'm going to go with the same effect. Now I'm going to be starting off with Tinny Tin, and I'm going to dry brush vertically downwards, exactly like this on the video. So I've picked a medium dry brush, and as you can see, those little plinth details start to go dark, uh, and that's the idea I want. I didn't want to sort of make it a nice bright base, because the whole of the terrain piece is all battle damaged. And so I want a worn, grimy gold look. I don't want it to look all blingy uh, like a Allegio Custodius, for example. I don't want that kind of gold. I want that dark, moody, worn, battered gold. So all I'm going to do is just go around that whole bit there with the tinny tin, making sure that you drag vertically downwards only uh, with, that, uh, with that tin colour. Uh, hammered copper, I think, would work very similar. Now, just to finish that off, I'm just going with pure black and doing exactly the same. And where those, uh, those heavy tin pieces are, I'm just going to dry brush directly over the top of those and just leave some of that tin below it and just pick out the very tops with the black. Again, making sure that you dry brush vertically downwards only. You can see me here using the side of the dry brush as well as the flat edge of it as well. Uh, two different ways of using that dry brush just to make sure that you target where you're going to be uh, dragging that black effect down over that brass colour so that it picks out sort of the grimy runs rather than just making it a uniform dry brush uh, downwards across that gold. That's not the effect I wanted, so uh, a smaller dry brush would do the job, but you know what, the brush has got two sides, so uh, or four sides really, if you think of it, uh, if you want to look at it. Anyway, um, so the, uh, the terrain joining pieces that I've got here, I'm just going back over then with Yushabti Bone. Uh, again, this is your choice, this depends on what the finish is on your terrain piece. As I said, mine is all in this colour scheme, so it makes perfect sense for me to paint these pieces exactly the same as I have the main terrain set. Now, there's lots of pipes and stuff on there, I'm going to be painting those in a second as well. Uh, lots of dials and bits and pieces, and I'll be painting those um, uh, just to match the rest of my terrain set. And this is it, this is the finished model. Now I've not um, painted all the details around the back on camera because if you want to go and see exactly how I've done that I'll leave links to my Sector Mechanicus terrain which uh, has got exactly the same thing. So how I've done the little dials, uh, how I've done all the cables and all that kind of stuff is all on those videos already. This video is really focusing on this worn stone effect uh, which I think looks looks alright, you know. It's, it is terrain so it's not going to win a Golden Demon Award in any stretch of the imagination but it's certainly one up from a very basic level. All those dials are painted in round the back as we slowly rotate round. I've got some still photos at the end of this video if you want to hang on for those rather than me sort of spinning it around in my hands. But uh, that is, uh, that's pretty much it. So let's have a look at the stills. So you can see there all round the back it's all, uh, all suitably weathered and grimy uh, as befitting any uh, hero of the Imperium statue. He can't look box fresh uh, because that would just be wrong in the grim dark of the far future. You can see there I've got all those little dials all painted in, a little gloss bit of varnish to make it look like they're in glass. P picked out that Mechanicum symbol in the traditional black and white uh, half colour scheme. Um, but as I said earlier, if you want to know exactly how I do those, I'll link you up with my Sector Mechanicus painting. And uh, that should all be in there just for you guys. And there we go then guys, that is how I've painted the statues for the Sector Imperialis Basilicanum. And then when you do two of them and you stick them on the front end of your Basilicanum, that's what you uh, that's what you get. Uh, I'm pretty happy with the way that's turned out. So there we go then guys, that's going to wrap up this video. That showcases exactly how I've painted these, uh, these stone statues. As I said, uh, you can apply this similar technique pretty much to any kind of stone statue kind of fallen masonry effect if you choose to do so. Uh, but for me, I think these were, this technique works perfectly for this aged and weathered stone effect. Uh, as befitting the Basilicanum from Games Workshop. Hope you enjoyed the video, hope you learned something new. If you did, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. I shall catch you guys on the next video.